Wow, look at that. Look at that. Hi, I'm Hanbit, and I'm a pastry chef from Korea. Hi everybody, it's Hanbit here. 안녕하세요, 조한빛입니다. This is the cake that so many of you have requested in the past few months, and it's Hanbit's red velvet cake. It's absolutely delicious, and as you can see, it is probably the prettiest red velvet cake that you have seen. I've put in a lot of effort in developing the recipe and the design. I've actually carried out a lot of research regarding this red velvet cake. And what I've realized was that as long as you use dark red colored cake sheets and some sort of cream cheese frosting, then that's a red velvet cake. The way I approached when designing my recipe was that I used the genoise. So overall, it kind of lightened the overall texture, but I really like it. So do give it a try. Some recipes call for two layers of sheets, but I felt that three layers look nicer, so I've used three layers of genoise. The first step is to make the red velvet genoise. Red velvet genoise, or you can call it the red velvet sponge. There are recipes that use the pound cake batter to make the red velvet cake, and that will result in a more kind of dense texture. But I wanted to lighten it up, so that's why I'm using this genoise recipe. And the steps are identical to what you would do for a regular genoise. If you haven't tried making genoise yet, please take a look at my previous videos on how to make the genoise. So how is this red velvet genoise different? The difference is that I brought the theme of red velvet into the genoise. First of all, I'm using cocoa powder and red food coloring to achieve that dark red color. And that's kind of the norm. You use both cocoa powder and red food coloring. It's not just red food coloring alone because you want that kind of dark color for that red velvet. That's why you add in the cocoa powder. And plus, it makes it taste better. And secondly, I'm using buttermilk, which is kind of very standard for red velvet. And if you can't get hold of buttermilk, you can make the buttermilk yourself. And I put that down in the recipe. Right, so I'll go through the ingredients. Whole eggs and egg yolk. Usually for genoise, you would use whole eggs alone. But I wanted to give it a twist because it's red velvet and I wanted to enrich the overall flavor. So I've added both whole eggs and egg yolks. Sugar, cake flour and cocoa powder. I've melted the butter and mixed it with the buttermilk. And finally, red food coloring. As you would have seen in my genoise videos, making genoise requires you to follow certain steps. And if you don't, you will not end up with the perfect genoise. And the key theme about this genoise is that it's all about air. It's all about incorporating a lot of air, but the right amount of air. We're not using baking powder or baking soda in genoise. The sole leavener for genoise is air. That's why it's that important. Anyway, more details on how to make the perfect genoise is in my previous video, so please take a look. The red velvet genoise that I'm going to show you today would be sort of like a crash course. First, the sugar goes in. I'm just going to whisk it lightly and use a hot water bath to bring the temperature of this mixture up to around 40 degrees Celsius. You do need to bring the temperature up to around 40 degrees Celsius, or else it'll be difficult to incorporate a lot of air into it. Great, now it's reached 40 degrees Celsius, so I'll whip it on max. Right, so this has gained a lot in volume, and the color has changed from yellow to kind of pale yellow, almost ivory. This mixture has also become thick, so I'm going to carry out the ribbon test and check how thick it is. Great, it holds, so it's thick enough. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth out the air bubbles because at the moment I've got rough irregular air bubbles as I whipped it on max using my hand mixer. So I need to smooth it out by running on kind of the lowest speed on your hand mixer for around two to three minutes. You do have to smooth it out so you don't end up with kind of large holes or air bubbles when your genoise is baked. I'm also going to add in my red food coloring at this point. There's no rule to how much food coloring you need to add. The best way is to gauge it by eye. So I'm just going to add it in now. And after I mix in my cake flour and cocoa powder, I'm going to reassess it, take a look at the color. And if I need to, I'll add in more food coloring. Great, you can see that I've smoothed out the air bubbles so that the surface is very smooth and silky. And it's, it's almost shiny, right? Now I'm going to add in the sifted cake flour and cocoa powder. And use the J motion. Great, so now the powder has mixed in really well. Now it's time for the melted butter and buttermilk. I'm going to add in a scoop of the original butter. 
mix it in. And this makes it easier to mix everything together. Great, now this goes in. I've added in a drop of black food coloring, so it will kind of deepen and darken the color. Great, so everything's mixed well. I'm going to transfer this to my Genoise pan. Right now, this will go into the oven. Right, my red velvet genoise has just come out of the oven. What you need to do is drop it from a height so it releases the hot air that's trapped inside. That way, it won't shrink as it cools down. And then I'm going to put it on a cooling rack. Now I'm going to let it cool upside down like this for about 10 minutes and then turn it back. That way you'll end up with a genoise that has a homogeneous texture inside. Now my red velvet genoise has completely cooled down. So I'm going to slice it into three sheets of one and a half centimeter thickness. Perfect, now I'm ready to make the cream cheese frosting. Now, the cream cheese frosting. There are a variety of cream cheese frosting recipes out there, and it's very difficult to choose which one to use. I've spent a lot of time in perfecting my recipe for the cream cheese frosting, and this is the cream cheese frosting that I really like. It's a variation of the classic cream cheese frosting, and when we say classic, it's a recipe that involves both cream cheese and butter. As I mentioned earlier, my cream cheese frosting is a variation of the classic. First of all, I've added lemon zest, which adds acidity and it balances out the overall flavor, which can be a bit buttery and a bit creamy. I actually used this method for my New York cheesecake as well, where I used a bit of sour cream. Secondly, I've added a bit of heavy cream to this recipe and this kind of balances out and smooths out the butteriness that comes from the butter. And finally, if you look at the amount of powdered sugar I use as a percentage of the whole weight, it's far less than what's used for a classic recipe. I just feel that the standard recipe has too much powdered sugar, so I've reduced that massively. But the downside of that is that the overall texture of the finished cream cheese frosting can be a bit too runny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the fridge for a few minutes, like 10 to 20 minutes, and bring the temperature down and solidify a bit before I use it. Firstly, I'm going to lightly beat my cream cheese, which is at room temperature. I'm going to sift in my powdered sugar. Now that I've mixed in the powdered sugar, I'm going to set this aside and beat my butter. If your kitchen is a bit too warm and you're worried about the temperature of your cream cheese batter going up, then feel free to put this in the fridge while you beat the butter. Now about the butter. I know that some people add in the room temperature butter straight into the cream cheese batter. That's fine, but that's not the way I do it. I always beat the butter before adding it in. And the reason for that is firstly, it just smooths out the butter so that you won't get any lumps later when you add it in to your cream cheese batter. And secondly, beating the butter smooth with the hand mixer lightens it up. Well, I want to lighten the cream cheese frosting because I think that kind of balances everything out nicely. So I'm going to beat the butter smooth. I'm going to add the smooth butter that I've just beaten, but I'm not going to add everything all at once, but I'm going to add it in two steps. So half goes in, and the other half goes in. Now that that's all mixed in, the lemon zest will go in. And finally, the heavy cream. So this is the texture of my cream cheese frosting. To be honest, this is not runny and you can still pipe it, but I would recommend just putting it in the fridge for about five minutes and bringing the temperature down to around 18 degrees Celsius. The current temperature of this is around 19 to 20. Now it's time for the assembly. We're going to put everything together and make a delicious and the prettiest red velvet cake that you've ever seen. Make sure you place the sheet at the very center of the turntable. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe the cream cheese frosting, place the next sheet, and then pipe the cream cheese frosting again, and place the next sheet. This cream cheese frosting tends to melt when you hold it in your hand, and that's why I'm wearing gloves here.
I'm just going to smooth it out slightly using a spatula. Place the next sheet. Now place the final sheet on top. I'm going to smooth the top using a spatula. Right, I think that looks really good. So now time for the final touch. Just before the final decoration, I'm going to show you something really cool, which is the microwave sponge. And I'm going to use this to decorate my red velvet cake. So this is just like Genoise. It's the same. That's what we call a sponge. So I've got eggs here. That's whole eggs, sugar, cake flour, and melted butter. And finally, red food coloring, because I'm going to turn this into something red, because I'm going to put it on my red velvet cake. This is a Genoise where you use the microwave to bake it, so it's extremely quick. It's a simplified version of the regular Genoise, so it's not as delicate, and that's why it's only used for decorations. Sugar goes in. I'm going to raise the temperature of this mixture to around 40 degrees Celsius using a hot water bath, so that when I whip it, I can whip a lot of air into it. Great, that's 40 degrees, so I'll take it out of the water bath. Now, I'm going to whip this until the mixture gets really thick. Great, the mixture here has gained a lot of volume and it's become pale. I'm now going to add in food coloring and there's no rule to how much food coloring you need to add. You just need to gauge it as you add it in. I'm going to add in the sifted flour. As soon as you see that all the butter has mixed in, then it's time to transfer it to a cup and bake it in the microwave. It expands a lot when it's baked, so I filled about a third of the cup. So now, it's ready to go into the microwave. Look at this, it took less than two minutes in the microwave. Super quick. It's really hot right now, so I'm just going to take it out and leave it to cool and just tear it into pieces and use that. Ta-da! Oh, it's hot. These will look really cool as decorations on a red velvet cake. The purpose of using this microwave sponge as decoration is that it looks good, but it looks good because it's got these kind of big holes and it looks rough. And that's what makes it look artistic and look nice. Look at that. Look at that. I can't wait to try it. Look at the layers. Look at the genoise and the cream cheese frosting. It looks delicious. Mm. This is absolutely delicious. The genoise is relatively light in terms of the texture, but the cream cheese frosting is rather heavy. So they balance out nicely and also the lemon zest inside the cream cheese frosting adds a bit of tanginess, which is great. Overall, this is a delicious red velvet cake. Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial on Hamid's red velvet cake. I've spent a lot of effort coming up with the recipe and the design. Please give it a go and I'm sure you'll love it. I'll come back next time with another amazing recipe. Thank you very much. Kamzamida.